How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Spurverts. It's me, Craig Mitch. I'm back, joined by Barnaby Slater, of course. And uh, today, we're just going to get straight into things. England out is going to be one of the subjects. Uh, the future, who's going to be the next England manager, um, how our boys played throughout the tournament, our Belgian boys over there in action, uh, Hugo and the French, and of course, Juan Yama providing some light relief. But we're going to kick things off with England crashing out of Euros. Barnaby, what's your thoughts? <sighs> Well, obviously, this is a Spurs channel. This is Spurverts. We should keep it, you know, tight to Spurs. But the reality is, life is so depressing today, yeah. and everything feels so inevitable. Obviously, you and I have already had a row on text about this. <laughs> yeah. I'm obviously a lot older than you, so this to me is just another roll on. I remember watching England in 1998 when I was 17 and crying in a field after they went out on penalties against oh. Argentina, and yet. Ever since then, it's just got worse and worse, seemingly. You know, we've gone through the golden generation, yeah. out the other side, and the only thing that remains pretty much set in stone every time is that the FA appoint a manager who, you know, never bangs heads, doesn't scare people. I mean, I guess the closest we came with to that was Fabio Capello, but he didn't speak the language. Do you know what yeah. I mean? He basically didn't speak the language. So then there's always an excuse for the England players to be like, oh, this isn't the guy we want to play for. And Roy Hodgson just, you know, you know, and bring it back to Spurs. We had five Spurs players in that team, and we see them week in, week out. They know each other's games. They know where they're going to play. But then, for England, he plays Ali out of position. He doesn't play Ali where he can do his most damage. Yeah. And because of that, Kane's got nowhere near him. He played this three up front last night, which I couldn't believe, where they were, you know, the two wingers were on the sides. Kane completely isolated. And then he puts him on free kicks and corners when his confidence is shot anyway because he's not getting any chances, not scoring any goals. Yeah. And he becomes a scapegoat. He's been the scapegoat for the whole tournament, I think. And, you know, obviously Hodgson has gone now, so there's no need to talk about that. But I just fear that it will be much of a muchness again. They'll go for Southgate because he's the safe choice. And he's not going to inspire them either. Before we get on to the future, so, so who is to blame? Who's to blame? Loads of people, like you said, from the previous generation said, oh, we need to get the likes of Lampard out, Gerard out. Mm. These guys are too old. We need some youth injected in there like Germany did three, four years ago. Mm. We need to usher in the new blood. We've done that. Mm. And, it's, and it's even more embarrassing. We've reached a new low, losing to Iceland. Yeah, to me, to me, the, uh, the blame lies squarely at the, uh, the suits of the FA. It really does. And I'd like Tie to... Up. Uh, yeah, yeah, right up there. Because to me, you know, they all sit on massive pay, paychecks and they're kind of old men, they've been there for years, and they never, like I kind of alluded to, they never appoint the man who would, would change things. It was Brian Clough back in the day who should have got the job, yeah. and uh, since then they've gone for safe pairs of hands, and I fear that they will again. I'd like to use Italy as an example. We've talked about this. Yesterday, yeah. Italy absolutely dominated Spain, outplayed them with 11 players on the pitch, who none of whom you would say are, apart from maybe Buffon, our top, top players. Jacarini. Jacarini from what? Sunderland is an example. The reason why they can do that and the reason why they outplayed Belgium earlier in the tournament as well is because Antonio Conte, their manager, is a winner. And that's he scary is. for us to say because he's going to Chelsea and he's going to rip it up there because he's a, a real winner and he won't accept egos and he'll do it for what's best for the team just as Leicester have done this season. Yeah. And England need to do that. They need to find a guy who's going to mould a group of players, put them in their right positions for a start mm. and mould them into a team. And also, I kind of think that it needs to be someone who's going to change it from the bottom up. And I'll give you this one. Jurgen Klinsmann, Spurs legend, I'm not just saying it because of that. Yep. When Germany were at rock bottom, they lost 1-0 to England in the groups of the Euros in 2000. Neither Germany or England got out of that group in the end. Uh, Germany came bottom of the group. They appointed Jürgen Klinsmann and he changed things from grassroots upwards, put it all in place so that everyone was playing exactly the same type of football yeah. in their right positions as a team in one formation. And as a result, uh, he was manager during uh, the World Cup in 2006 in Germany. They got to the semi-finals, didn't quite make it to the final. He stepped aside for his assistant, Joachim Love, to take it and they won the World Cup after that. We, I wouldn't go against, whether a German would take the job or not, I wouldn't go against Jürgen Klinsmann. He's an Anglophile, he's been here, he loves it here. If he fancied it, I'd go for him because he's done well in so America So you've moved well. on to the next topic, which is, you know, potential I, manager. You're yeah, saying... It all links into one, one another, doesn't it, really? I, I, I Klinsmann? I think he has to be high up on the list. Uh, I did do, well with the USA? He's done well with the USA. He got them, uh, he did really well at the World Cup with them a couple of years ago. Yeah. 
Uh, and then he got them to the semis of the Copa America. I, yeah. I think realistically that's as good as USA are ever yeah, going to get. Yeah, I was surprised um, they actually got to the semis. I, I just look at that list of people, you know, who's on that list? Southgate. It's like Southgate, you know. The clown from Euro 96. Klinsman, Klinsman's, I mean, Southgate's done okay with the under 21s, but nice. he's not an inspiring man manager. You're, you're not going to respect him as a young individual looking at his history, looking at what he's no. achieved. You're going to look at him and think, what can you really teach me? Yeah. Alan Shearer's another one on the list. Shearer's on the list mainly, I think, because he pitched for the job last night on Match <laughs> of the Day. I, if you haven't seen that, go on yeah. to iPlayer and check it because he basically just says, oh, well, I interviewed yeah. for it five years ago. They said I wasn't experienced enough. I said, well, you've gone for experience and paid them loads of money before and I couldn't do any worse than that. I'm happy <laughs> to talk to them again. It's funny seeing a guy pitch for a job. Yeah. Other people on the list, like Sam Allardyce, oh. uh, Harry's on the list. I think it's a few years What about years Harry? Because I, 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 I'm one of the well, people that thought Harry should have got it the he first He certainly time. couldn't do any worse. My worry with Harry is he should have got it four or five years ago. Yeah. He was the right man at that point. I think when you're of the age of Harry, and I'm not being ageist here, but you can very quickly lose a bit of mental edge and he's been out of the game. He didn't do a great job at QPR. He's, yeah. he's, I think he's the Jordanian consultant now. And I just, you know, he, he, not, he wouldn't not, do any worse. He would not do any worse, but whether he's quite got the mental agility anymore, I'm not sure. is it as demanding as, say, you know, working week in, week out in, at a Premier League club or a normal club? You're, you're, how often are you yeah. linking up with these group of players? It's, it's not, not that demanding. It's not as demanding on a day-to-day -day basis, but it is a, an absolute pressure cooker of a job if yeah. and when you get to the tournament. I'll tell you now, if Southgate gets a job, I would worry whether we would make it to the World Cup because he has a lot of Steve McLaren about him for me. He does. In terms of, you know, he's a good coach, I reckon, probably, but... Will he, like you kind of mentioned, will he go bang in the change room, bang, bang, bang? You know, you've got to, yeah. you've got to scare them sometimes. Alex Ferguson, he was the key of scaring them. So, uh, so you want to you look abroad rather than maybe look here for a manager? Uh, I think it's not that I want to. I just don't think the, the hopes are really there. A lot of people saying, Eddie Howe, what a great young coach. But he you is. can't tell me that he's going to go into a group like England with all the egos and where they've played a higher level than him and he has yeah. never managed players of that ego, yeah. that calibre. That would be and a that's, huge risk. that's important uh, that you need to be able to handle those. That's something Harry would be able to do. Another name on it is Arsene Wenger. A lot of the a lot of the, um, the pundits are saying he would be the dream, whether he would take it or not. But they feel like he's coming to the end of his Arsenal reign. Yeah. And he's an Anglophile as well, obviously. I, I don't think he'd take it, but if he did, at least you know he'd get them playing the right way. You know, he'd get them yeah. playing good tempo. It would be a uh, philosophy, stuff, basically. It would be a philosophy, absolutely. But All right, uh, let us know in the comments below if you think we should go abroad for a manager or if you should, you know, stick here. Martin, All right. Martin Yoll is also on that list. Oh, my God. I mean, Martin Yoll, legend at Spurs, did a great job, but it just shows... I think for me, the, the barrel is being scraped because Martin Yoll has just won, I think, the Premier League in Egypt. Oh, uh, is a, that where he is? club there, yeah. And, you know, that is a, a barrel scraping at its worst. That is that. low. Although, big Martin Yoll, he did a great job at Spurs and he was unlucky. Let's talk about our boys. So yeah. we touched on them briefly at the top of the show. Yeah. Um, I mean, who performed and who didn't perform? I mean... I think Eric Dyer had a great tournament. Oh, amazing tournament. And... and the fullbacks? Yeah, yeah. But just to keep on Eric Dyer for a second, yeah. I think... I think it summed it up a little bit for Hodgson and Gary Neville, his assistant, and Ray Lewington. Taking him off at half-time yesterday, I can see what they were thinking. They're thinking, take off the defensive midfielder because Iceland aren't going to attack. But he's not just a defensive midfielder. No, he he's a leader. Balls. He can spray the ball, good passer of the ball. Yep. And also, he scored our free kick from outside the box. Yep. You, know, give, you know, We get another option, uh, opportunity like that. But you need to keep your leaders on the pitch, especially when Rooney wasn't having a great game. Mm. He brought on Jack Wheelchair. And you've got to say, uh, Shearer said it in Match of the Day afterwards as well, how he could take uh, Jack Wheelchair when he's only he hadn't played 90 minutes all season and he got pulled off the game before because he was poor yeah you I know. think maybe he thought Jack Wilshere may, might be able to play that killer through ball and unlock the defence, but it just it never happened and it completely backfired. Uh, the fullbacks, yeah, I Walker thought, had a very good tournament in my opinion. I think he did. I think they're both getting a little bit of stick for last night, but unnecessarily. I don't think they did anything wrong. I mean, the whole wrong. team were, were, were poor. What I would say about Kyle Walker and Danny Rose, and this is improving, and I've said this um, on Spurred on in the last few months, that their, their final ball, their delivery has improved a lot. At Spurs, yeah. Um, it's been a very obvious thing in the last four or five months of the season that they've been told when they get to the byline, cut it back for the on-running midfielder. So think of Lamella's goal against Man United as a yeah. perfect example of that. Delhi coming onto the ball for midfield a lot. At, at England, nobody was telling them, giving them anything when you reach the byline, do something, do something, because it wasn't happening like that. In fact, Sterling and Sturridge were in front of them blocking their space last night. Yeah, it was. 
So like you said, and it's true, no philosophy, no idea exactly of what they need to do at any given time. And players need that. And we really see that with Poch. Mm. They, you know, you can almost see little moves unraveling like you've seen before because they yeah. all know where to be uh, at the right time. But yes, Carl Walker, I think, has definitely um, improved his uh, standing amongst England fans. Uh, and Danny Rose, I think, is the best left back in the country at the moment as well. So, you know, I think they did well. Yeah, Delhi like uh, and Harry, oh, I think. Oh, Delhi and uh, Harry. They talked about it last week. Emma and, uh, and Reese talked about it last week. I just think delhi has been out of position the whole time. Uh, he needs to be further up the pitch, not being given so much responsibility. The 4-3-3 that Roy was pl was playing the whole time, I, I just cannot fathom it because pretty much, I don't know, you tell me, Craig, pretty much every single player in that England team plays a 4-2-3-1 at club level. Yeah. So why are we playing this 4-3-3? Play a 4-2-3-1, Dyer and Rooney, and then you can have Delhi playing either off the left, which is where he scored those goals against West Brom and Everton, making those runs in behind the front yeah. man, or, or behind the front man, behind Harry I Kane. I think this is a problem that Roy's just trying to accommodate too many names in the yeah, side and he's absolutely. trying to be a people square pleaser. Pegs, square pegs round holes. I just don't understand. And, but the, what I will say about uh, Deli Ali and Harry Kane is I just don't feel like they were playing with that that no fear attitude that yeah. they've had throughout the season. Yeah. And it is a question of this is, you know, the Euros, it's a bigger stage, there is a lot more pressure, it's not yeah. just a club, it is the nation. But I feel like they should have just played with no fear. They, they, need a, they need absolutely right and they need a manager who takes that fear off them, yeah. who says to them, go out and play and make them game. believe that as well. Yeah. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Yesterday I got the feeling with the entire England team that they basically just shat themselves under the pressure of it all. Yeah. And that was, you know, I actually think if we'd snuck through that game and played France, then the pressure would all be on France and they'd be able to play more of a natural game. What would you but say to Iceland. a lot of the people that have been on Twitter and social media saying that, oh, if, you know, with that Tottenham being the spine, of course we're not going to do anything. All the other clubs criticising it, saying it's Tottenham's fault. Yeah, I'd say, you know, especially to Spurs fans, you know, I'm very excited about the guys getting back into the kind of bosom of Marito Pochettino, who yep. will make them realise again that it's not about that, it's about the terrible management, yeah. the, the bad decision making. And just, yeah, it was, you know, the, the collapsing under pressure. But they are, they're young boys, the Spurs guys. It's not they're even just boys. that. I also say to these people, who else are you going to put in there other than them? There is no one else. Well, they are, not, the, they not, are the best we have. But it's not have. like Jack Wilshere came on and didn't collapse under pressure himself. And he's, he's you know supposedly I mean? a lot more experienced. Although, frankly, in terms of games, he really isn't. Um, and Wayne Rooney had his worst game for England since, for me, yeah. Algeria World Cup 2010. Wow, which is when the ball was bouncing off him left, right and centre. Yeah. And similar things were happening yesterday. It was terrible. All right, so we're moving on to the Belgian boys. Yeah. So, on the other side of Europe, even though we're not in it no more. Yeah. Belgium, obviously we've got Toby Alderweireld over there, Jan yep. Vertonghen, Moussa Dembele, even though he's had a knock. Yep. Uh, Michi Batshuayi. <laughs> potentially, maybe, potentially. Maybe. I mean, uh, Axel they Witzel, been if you get your way. I, I wish, I wish. And, uh, Axel Witzel, I have to say, has played really well. Um, for me, it's interesting, actually, because now my instinct is to support Wales because of Gareth Bale and Ben Davis and stuff. But actually, whatever happens, we're going to have some players in the semi-finals of the I'm, Euros. I'm it's quite Belgium. exciting. I'm going to back Belgium. Um, interestingly for me, uh, obviously, Toby scored in the last game. He will always get you a goal or two. From a set piece, from definitely. From a set piece. Um, Jan's doing what Jan can do at left back. He's not a left back, but he does a good job for Belgium. But Musa hasn't been getting in the team since the Ireland game. They beat Ireland 3-0. Then I think he got a bit of an ankle knock. Yeah. And um, Nangalan and uh, Witzel are still in and uh, Fellaini plays as well. Yeah. For me, if they bring Dembele in for the Wales game, Wales are in big trouble because, as we all know, he's a beast. You can't get the ball off him. Yeah. And he makes it a lot easier for his, his teammates. I would back Belgium in that game, but it won't be easy. Remember Wales? I can't get, I can't get my head around him not being one of the first names on the sheet. Though, I think he has Dembele. had a knock. It must be that. It must okay. be that. I think the, the manager, Wilmots, knows that he made a mistake not playing him in the first, first game. game yeah. uh, and then he got a knock in the Ireland game. But, um, they have got a wealth of talent though. They've got a wealth Chris of Mertens. talent. Hazard's, Hazard's now coming back into it. I would say though, they're going to be wary of Wales because Wales did turn them over in the qualifying. Okay. So it could be a tight game. Do you game. feel like they found their form after winning so emphatically a little in their bit, last game? I, a little bit. I felt Hungary were a bit naive and kind of attacked them. Like yeah. Hungary had a lot of chance. It could have ended like 4-2, 5-2. Yeah. But Wales won't do that. Wales will sit tight and then they'll mm. break and give it to Ramsey and Bale. Who, who, they play in like this weird uh, Christmas tree formation where Bale and Ramsey just get free reign to do whatever yeah. they want behind. Christmas tree formation. It is. It's like a 4-3-2-1. That's what it is. It's okay. a, we call that back in the day Christmas tree formation. Oh, okay. um, and uh, Wales could nick it but it would be tight I think if it went to penalties I'd back Belgium OK but overall you think our boys have done well there? Definitely oh absolutely yep. and, and Toby Alderweireld it's, I'd love them to get a bit of a rest but 
uh, he just gets better and better and better. Oh, what does. an unbelievable player. The, the best 12 million you know, Spurs have ever spent. All right, moving on to our captain over in France, Hugo, yeah. Hugo. I mean, how do you think he's performed? How are France performing he's generally? Made, he's made a couple of very uh, vital saves. You know, mm -hmm. if you compare him to Joe Hart, he hasn't made any clangers, and Joe Hart threw two in yeah. for England in four games. It's mortifying as a goalkeeper. How do you feel about, you know, the goalkeeper being the skipper, leading from the back? I mean, even for Spurs, I've never really been convinced with yeah. that. I feel like the leader needs to be outfield. But let's not forget Forget. I think well, what Hugo obviously is is he's a leader by example rather than a, a big baller, shouter, you yeah. know, communicator. As was Ledley when he was our, our leader. In terms of being a goalkeeper, the the one for, the one pro for it is you can see the whole game. Yeah. So you know it becomes easier a bit like that. But then the negative is you're nowhere near the referee. You know you mm. can't really you know you don't see Hugo chasing the referee 50 yards. So there are pros and cons to it. But but to me. You know, we don't see them training every day and whatever. It can't be coincidence that Poch has picked him as his leader for Spurs yeah. and he's been the French uh, captain for about four or five years now. Mm. So he obviously brings a lot in the dressing room, kind of a calmness. And frankly, if only Joe Hart had brought that level of calmness oh, and then we wouldn't have shocking. to see him punching himself in the head after throwing in another goal last <laughs> Knocking night. Knocking that dandruff out straight yeah, for those totally head and shoulders. So out, Hugo, I think Hugo's done well. The pressure has been big time on France. Second half against Ireland. Uh, I, I saw an interview, I can't remember with which French player, I think it was Evra, came out and said, you know, at half time we said to each other, what are we doing? We've been dragged into this long ball game. We've got yeah. to be passionate and play the way we play. And immediately they came out and started playing short stuff, lovely tempo. If only England could have said something like that at half time, maybe it would have been different. But they just got drugged into the, into the Iceland long ball game. It was poor. It was poor overall. So French doing well, Hugo doing well. I, fancy, I still fancy them to go for, all the way. To the final. Possibly, I mean, yeah. in my opinion, as long as Belgium or France win it and one of our players walks away with a major trophy, then it will bring a lot of confidence into next season. I don't, I don't really, want to see Wales win it for that reason. I don't really want to see Hazard lifting it though. So I'd rather see Hugo, oh. Hugo lifting it. Just Hugo. Hazard, yeah. You wouldn't want three of our players to take away that kind of. I know of, what you mean, yeah, but. I know after what Hazard did. Uh, as long as Germany don't win it, and I mean I would back Wales, but no. Nah. Uh, all right, so we're gonna finally end it on some, you know, light relief. Yeah. We needed that. One Yama provided that. He signed for yeah. Spurs and posed. I holding did, spaghetti. I did tell you a little bit about this, didn't I? Let's you did. I, did. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know what the so tweet was. So basically, was back in the day, Victor Wanyama has got a very interesting Twitter feed. And if you don't follow him, do. He seems like a funny guy as well as a scary beast in midfield. Yeah. <laughs> Let's face it. Um, and earlier on uh, this season, he tweeted. Uh, one day, I've just, I'm paraphrasing here, but it's basically, I just made spaghetti, I like it a lot, or something like that. And so when he signed for Spurs, um, the, the guys at Spurs' social media did a great job and got him holding some spaghetti, and that was <laughs> super funny. Okay. Check that out, you see. We'll put a picture on it over there, magically now. Yeah, I was so confused like about that spaghetti thing. I just but, hold him, I saw him holding uncooked yeah, yeah, pasta. Yeah, yeah. I was but, wondering what that but was about. Check out his Twitter feed, he is funny. Okay. He's, he's a funny guy. And he, to be honest, you know, it, it does sum up to me how good a job Poch and Paul Mitchell are doing in getting in the guys that they know are going to add yeah. to the squad. Um, already, I think Jan Vertonghen tweeted Victor Wanyama saying, you know, welcome to welcome, Spurs yeah. and all that. Trying to keep that bonding going. We need that together. And as I've said, I know, I know you know, you're still feeling a little bit delicate after the end of the season, I but I think if we can get off to a good start, Everton away, get a, get a, well, it won't be easy, but if we could get a win there and, and take it on, it could be another great season. A striker. Possibly. We just need a bloody striker. That's what we need. We'll get a striker. Also, we? also, before we head out, I thought it was interesting that he was wearing a shirt and holding up a scarf because they can't reveal the new kit. Yeah, I so badly right. want to see that new kit. The they had him in a training kit. The training kit. They had him in a right. training kit. Were you going to get your hands on the training kit, maybe? Well, you know, if someone sends it to me for free. Oh, you don't want to spend it bit on it, no? <laughs> got, I haven't got enough bigger, mate. Lost it all betting on the Euros. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, so this has been Spurbets. Let us know in the comments below what you think of England being out, unfortunately. Uh, who you think should be the next England manager? How our boys played the Spurs boys? Our Belgian boys, what do you think of their performance? Hugo, is he captaining France? Well, and of course, Victor Wanyama and the pasta. Let us know in the comments below if you've enjoyed the video. Make sure you drop it a like. If you're new to Spurred On, make sure you subscribe. The new season's coming. We're going to have loads of new content. Content. Keep it casual. Keep it casual. Hello and welcome to an episode of Tottenham Transfer Talk with me, Reese, and Emma. 